But before we get started, we would like to thank Beacon Hill Black Alliance for Human Rights for their support of this event. And we extend a warm welcome to our panelists and all of our guests. And yes, thanks to everybody for joining us today. So I am going to hand it over um, to whichever college would like. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We'd like to go first. I, I My script, I don't have the order for y'all, but if anybody would like to volunteer and go first. Um, I don't mind going first. You'll go first? All right. Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Um, yeah, so good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Alex Thomas. I have the pleasure of serving as one of the assistant directors of admissions at Georgia State University. Um, so I'm here representing GSU. We are now the largest university in the state of Georgia in terms of enrollment. So give me one moment. I'm going to share my screen. I do have a brief presentation I'm going to share with you all. And let me know, by the way, if you can't see my screen. Um, but with that being said, Georgia State, as I mentioned before, is the largest university. Uh, we are ranked top 10 nationally in several categories. That includes our commitment for undergraduate teaching, which is really important considering the size of the university. Oftentimes what I uh, see at other universities is that sometimes um, the instructors, the faculty members aren't always dedicated to teaching when you're in such a large environment. Um, our student to faculty ratio is about 26 to one. So you still get a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention um, that you need throughout your uh, college experience. Um, but we still have that top ranking for our undergraduate teaching. We're also ranked number two in the country for being most innovative. Much of that can be attributed to what we're accomplishing when it comes to student success and helping our students after they've been admitted to the university. So for example, we were the first university to start utilizing artificial intelligence in the enrollment process. So if you have ever filled out a contact card uh, for Georgia State, if you've applied to Georgia State and received a text message from us, you likely got that from our chat bot. Uh, so it's actually a robot that has over 20,000 different unique answers and can respond to any of your questions about admissions, financial aid, housing, student life, whatever it may be. And in the rare occasion that our chat bot uh, can't answer that question, then your question will come to myself or one of our admissions counselors for us to answer. Um, you'll also see that top five ranking for best first year experience. Um, also top 10 performer for social mobility. So you might be wondering, well, what exactly does that term social mobility really mean? Um, I can tell you that at Georgia State, about 50% of our students qualify for Pell Grant. Uh, so they do come from typically working class backgrounds, um, but the average mid-career salary for a Georgia State graduate is about $91,000 per year. So we really pride ourselves on giving students those opportunities beyond the classroom when they, whenever they start to consider their career. And if you look at that um, average salary, it's really changing the trajectory of our students' lives uh, and their potential earning income after graduation. Um, so we have over 250 different majors and academic degree programs uh, at Georgia State. I'm not going to go into detail, of course, about each and every one of them, but you'll see the different colleges and schools listed here. Um, we have 10 different colleges uh, under the university. Our Robinson College of Business is uh, one of the most popular ones at the university just because it's uh, pretty competitive. It's the sixth largest business school in the entire Southeast. Um, and so they have several programs that are ranked nationally as well. And it is what we call a gated program. So if you're interested in finance or marketing or business administration or entrepreneurship and you apply to Georgia State, you would be admitted as a pre-marketing major or pre-entrepreneurship major. So you have to take certain prerequisite classes your freshman and sophomore year before you actually are admitted to a Robinson College of Business. Same thing can be said about our College of Nursing and Health Professions is gated as well. But the cool thing is that because we're located in downtown Atlanta, a lot of our nursing and health profession students um, are able to have internships and shadow healthcare professionals at three major hospitals here in the downtown area, including Grady, uh, which has the only trauma center in the entire state. 
And you'll also see the honors college listed there in the bottom left hand corner. So each year we typically accept the top seven to eight percent of our early action applicants to our honors college. There's no separate application needed to be a part of the honors college. Uh, we typically just review your common app, your uh, high school transcript, any test scores. Keep in mind we are test optional for fall 2021. But we also encourage you to include an essay and a recommendation letter as well, even though those aren't required. Um, but once we review those, we typically will admit the top seven to eight percent. Students who do participate in honors, they get priority housing on campus, they get priority registration for their classes, and they have access to special advisors to help them apply for national scholarship and fellowship opportunities as well. Uh, we have 16 NCAA Division I athletic teams at Georgia State. In this picture here, you will see Center Park Stadium. Um, it used to be known as Turner Field. It's now the home of the uh, GSU football team. Uh, we just completed our 10th season uh, last year. Um, so we're very excited about where the uh, team is headed, where the program is headed, but we have lots of other uh, athletic teams to support as well. Our men's basketball team has made the NCAA tournament several times over the past few years. Um, our baseball team is really competitive and our beach volleyball team on the ladies side was actually ranked top 10 nationally uh, just a couple years ago. Um, so the cool thing is you actually don't have to pay any type of admission fee to get into any of the games as a GSU student, it's already included in your tuition and fees. So you just simply show your student ID card at the game. Uh, we have a little under 6,000 students currently living on campus at Georgia State. That includes uh, six residence halls altogether. And three of those residence halls are reserved for freshmen. That includes a 24 hour dining service at Piedmont Central. Uh, so the cool thing is that each freshman resident hall actually has a dining hall on the very first floor. So you don't have to leave your building and grab something to eat. And I do have like a short 50 second video that just kind of gives you a little bit of a sneak peek into the campus housing at Georgia State. So as you can see there, it's definitely not the traditional college campus. We like to promote ourselves as a campus without borders. So now let's talk about what the admissions profile looks like for students who are applying to Georgia State. Uh, so this is our freshman profile for last year for fall 2020. Um, you'll notice the average high school GPA fell between a 3.3 and 3.86. Uh, the exact average was close to about a 3.5 on a 4.0 scale. Um, and keep in mind, as I mentioned before, we are test optional. So only a, a small percentage, uh, roughly about 35% of the applicants actually submitted SAT or ACT scores. It was even a smaller percentage this year since we were test optional for the entire cycle. In that right column, you'll notice the profile for the Honors College. Uh, it is a little bit more competitive, but again, there's no separate application that's needed for admission to the honors. If you have not applied yet to Georgia State or you don't know exactly what your plan is after graduation next month, um, it's still not too late. You actually have, what, three, four more days? May 1st is this Saturday, so you still have a few more days to submit your application. Um, after you apply before May 1st, you still have an additional month to submit your official transcript and any test scores if you want to, um, to be considered for admission. We definitely recognize that financial aid and scholarships plays a huge part of your decision making process. Those first two scholarships that you see listed there, Coca-Cola, First Gen and Presidential, they actually require um, a separate application. Um, they have closed for this year, but if you are a junior or underclassman, you can definitely um, take note to apply for next year. 
Um, but the Coca-Cola First Gen uh, Scholarship is for students who are the first in their families to attend college. Uh, so that means uh, neither their parents or any of their siblings have attended college before. And you can receive up to $5,000 per year for that. Presidential scholarship is the top award given to an incoming freshman each year. We typically only give it to about 10 to 12 students, um, but it does include full tuition, fees are paid for, all of your housing, meal plan, plus you get a $2,500 stipend that you can use for study abroad or undergraduate research. And then the merit scholarships that you see listed in that middle category, they range between $500 to $3,000 per year, and they require no separate application at all. And if you ever have more questions, feel free to uh, check out our Welcome Center website at welcome.gsu.edu, or you can email me at that address. Uh, we have, we just started campus tours last week for our admitted freshmen. Um, we're hoping to kind of expand the access in the near future to prospective students as well. Um, but due to due to COVID situation uh, right now, it's only limited to admitted freshmen. But definitely check out our website if you have any other questions in the future. Thank you, Alex and Georgia State. Go Panthers! Um, and then next we'll do Albany State um, with Jalen. I think your last name Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Jalen. I am one of the admissions recruiters here at Albany State University. I am so glad to be here and let me share my screen. All right, so welcome to Albany State University. We are the largest HBCU college in the state of Georgia. So here are some facts and stats about ASU. We offer 60 plus program options and we were founded in 1903. Uh, we have an enrollment over 6,500 students, but we do offer three satellite campus in Cordell, Cairo and Waycross, Georgia. Even though we are a mid-sized university, we have a small classroom size. We have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, we offer 13 certificates that you can earn less than a year, 14 associate and career associate degrees, 29 bachelor's degrees, 11 master's degree, and one specialist degree. Also, more than 65% of our students receive financial aid. Our mascot here is the Golden Rams, and our school colors here are royal blue and old gold. So why Albany State? Where we're one of we're ranked one of the top 50 best HBCU college in the nation. And like I mentioned before, we are the largest HBCU in the state of Georgia and the 10th largest HBCU in the nation. Some of our top ranked programs are nursing, criminal justice, forensic science, dental hygiene and supply chain and logistics management. Fun fact, we're the only HBCU college that has a nursing program. So if you're interested in nursing, um, that's one fun fact about us. We're the only HBCU in the state of Georgia that offers that. Uh, also, we're the only university um, in the state of Georgia that um, nationally accredited for a forensic science program. So if you're, for, if you're interested in forensic science, that is also a really great program to get into here at ASU. So campus life. So once you get admitted into Albany State, you will be assigned academic coach and the academic coach will assist you with registering for classes. We do offer career services. So if you're looking for jobs on campus, um, internships, we do offer career services here on campus. So um, we do offer a center for undergrad research, um, dining halls on each campus, um, first and second year experience programs, honors programs, popular restaurants on campus, such as Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hut, Starbucks on campus. Um, if you're struggling with your classes, we do offer professional and peer tutors um, throughout campus. Um, here we have a total of 11 residence halls. So we have sweet style and we have traditional style here at ASU. Um, we also offer Ram Rush transportation. So if you don't have your car the first year or you just don't feel like driving, 
We do offer transportation that will take you back and forth to each campus. And it will also take you around the city of Albany as well. We offer reading, math, and writing labs and study abroad programs. So here's a list of some of our majors that we offer. I'm just gonna read a few. So if you're interested in like business, criminal justice, social work, um, you will be in the College of Professional Studies. Um, if you're interested in the health field, such as nursing, uh, respiratory care, sports medicine, you will be in the Darton College of Health Professions. If you're interested in creative majors or science majors, such as biology, um, psychology, we have a computer science program, you'll be in the College of Arts and Sciences here. So sports, we offer 11 men's and women's athletic programs here. We are a division two school. Uh, for men's sports, we offer baseball, basketball, football, track and field. And for women's sports, we offer basketball, cross country, soccer, softball, tennis, track and field, and volleyball. Uh, we also have a dance team um, and a marching band as well, if you're interested in that. So the admissions process, um, the first step is to apply. Um, we do um, offer fee waiver codes, but we are currently waiving application fees for the month of April. So you can apply now on Georgia Futures for free for the whole month of April. So once we, once we receive your application, we will then need your official high school transcript. Uh, once we receive your official high school transcript, your application will be ready for um, review. We are test optional uh, for fall of 2021. So um, you do not have to submit your SAT and ACT scores. So we really just need your official high school transcript. So this is the admissions requirement um, to get into our bachelor's degree program. Um, you need a high school GPA of a 2.0 uh, for SAT, uh, for evidence-based reading and writing, a 480, math, a 440, uh, for ACT, a 17 in English or reading, and 17 in math. Uh, for our associate's degree program, you just need a high school GPA of a 2.0. So this is our updated admissions requirement. Um, we, since we are waiving test scores, to get into our bachelor's degree program without your test scores, you need, you need at least a 2.5 or higher GPA to get into our bachelor's degree program. But if you have between a 2.0 to a 2.49, you'll be you're able to get admitted into our access pathway program. And the great thing about our access pathway pathway program is that once students um, earn a 2.0 college GPA their first year of college and maintain a, um, 30 credits, you're able to switch back into our bachelor's degree program. So that's one cool thing about our access pathway program. And campus tours, we are currently offering in-person campus tours. You'll just go onto our main website, asurams.edu, and on the search bar, you'll type in campus tour to fill out a campus tour request form. Uh, right now, we are offering campus tours Monday through Friday, and on Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m., and on Fridays at 10 a.m. Um, our summer campus tours start May 21st and, and, and ends August 1st, Monday through Wednesday at 10 a.m. And lastly, this is our contact information. You can call our call center number if you have any enrollment services questions. Um, if you um, need assistance with your application or if you have any questions regarding your application, you can call our, um, you can email us at admissions at asurams.edu. Also, the last day to apply for admissions, um, financial aid and housing for fall 2021 semester is June 1st. Thank you, Jalen in Albany State. I learned a lot from that too. Um, next, we will have um, Will Brown with Clayton State University.
Good morning, everybody. Give me just a moment and I am going to click a couple buttons and try to share my screen. Let me see if I've got the ability to do so. Where's the uh, quick route to the screen share button? I do not have that as an option currently. Do you see the, oh, the, the bar at the bottom with the green screen share? Ah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to. All right, let's see here. All right, can you all see my screen currently? Yes. Great. Let me switch. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Again, Will Brown from Clayton State University. I'm gonna be sharing some information, a uh, little bit of everything, whether you have heard the name Clayton State or this is your first time, uh, but our mascot were indeed the Lakers. So I'm gonna say welcome to Laker Nation. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with where we are geographically, we are indeed in Clayton County. Clayton County is located in the South Metro Atlanta area. You can see an overhead shot here. It's uh, far removed from uh, downtown Atlanta and, and traffic, things like that, but not too far at all. We're only about 15 minutes south down Interstate 75. Uh, very green, very beautiful campus, kind of like our own little bubble in a suburb of Metro Atlanta. We are known for having a, a number of bodies of water and lakes on campus. Uh, it's such a beautiful campus that we routinely have a number of movies and TV shows that are being filmed currently as well as previously on our campus. Uh, the one that we are known for is uh, indeed one of the Marvel films years ago, Captain America Civil War. If you've ever seen that film and remember a fight scene between the Black Panther and the Winter Soldier, there's a scene where they are uh, dueling on a catwalk of a building. That is actually a uh, bridge or an area within our student center right in the heart of campus. So again, not just uh, Marvel films, but uh, Netflix shows. And we've had a couple of projects being filmed on our campus just recently that hopefully you'll see our campus in the next few months on some of these new items. But not too far from Atlanta, still kind of a, a remote feel with that campus, uh, but still a very easy drive accessible with MARTA to get to all the fun stuff in the city of Atlanta. A little bit more about the institution. You can see some numbers and stats here at the bottom. We are a PBI, a predominantly black institution. So you'll see a little bit of our makeup with our student body in regards to not just the overall size, but also uh, male to female ratio and international student population where everybody is coming from on our campus. Size wise, we're kind of small to medium. We have total about 7,000 students. Uh, so small enough to where, again, like the class sizes are going to average about 30 year freshman year, but big enough to where uh, social activities, not just in Atlanta, but Division II sports, things like that on our campus. In regards to our academic offerings, we are primarily known for our undergraduate degree programs. We have a small number of associate's degrees, which are going to be two year degree programs. A majority of our degree offerings are going to be four year bachelor's degrees. Uh, we've got four colleges, including arts and sciences, business, health, as well as computing and informational mathematics. You'll see some of our most popular pro programs listed on the right hand side here, including business administration, a more unique program, including dental hygiene. We indeed have film study as a major as well. Integrative studies, for those of you who are interested in engineering, we have a pre-engineering uh, program in partnership with a number of research universities in the state. Also nursing and teacher education, no matter what age level or grade levels you would be interested in teaching. A Little bit on the social activities on our campus. Um, again, there's lots to do in Metro Atlanta, but in regards to on-campus clubs and organizations, this is just a, a sampling that we have here. We've got everything from intramural sports, indoor and outdoor, talked about the division two sports a little while ago, but also uh, fraternities and sororities on campus. That includes a mix of social organizations as well as some academic and religious fraternities and sororities as well. Then otherwise a lot of these are rooted in, uh, we've got like outdoor clubs and organizations for students, a lot of diversity and leadership trainings and offerings for students as well. A little bit about our on-campus housing. We do have a first year student housing requirement. So freshmen living on campus, you'll be in a building that we call Laker Hall. This is a four person suite style setup. Now the reason we call it a suite 
is because technically your kitchen, I'm going to call it more of a kitchenette. It's not a full size, but it's got all the essentials uh, in regards to a uh, refrigerator and freezer and an area for food prep, but doesn't necessarily have like full ovens and uh, stoves. Uh, you've got full kitchens like that down your hallway. But otherwise, it is a private bedroom setup. So four students to a suite, or if you want to call it an apartment, uh, it's going to be a four bedroom, two bath. Each student has their own bedroom. And then two of you would be sharing a bathroom. So particularly in the midst of uh, COVID-19, we've been very fortunate in the sense to have our students uh, still living on campus and been able to do so with each student having their own private bedroom in this setup. But again, a four bedroom, two bath setup. We've got tutoring and a number of academic resources right there in Laker Hall for first year students. Uh, of course, you get all your same internet access and also laundry facilities right there in the building. Don't have to go to your building next door or anything like that. Very easy walk, about five minutes to any of the academic buildings, the library, the student activity center, anything like that, right in the heart of campus. We are indeed taking applications for fall 2021. If we have any seniors in the crowd, the uh, application process starts with the application itself. You can do this online on our website. Uh, it links you to GA Futures or Georgia Futures, if you all are familiar with that website. For those of you who attend an APS high school, you have the chance to apply for free. If you do not, you can still either pay the application fee or we do accept application fee waivers from a number of organizations. So that information is online on the online application if you'd like to do that instead of paying the application fee. Right now, we are also like these other institutions utilizing test optional admission criteria. So we're gonna start by just reviewing your high school transcript and seeing if you're admissible based on your GPA. If not, then we'd let you know and that's when we would need potentially uh, either ACT or SAT scores. Final deadline to submit the application and transcript to be considered for fall admission is July 15th, but we're on a rolling basis right now. So we've got a lot of students who have been admitted for this coming fall. And as soon as you get these items into you, it takes us no more than about a week to get you an admission decision. In regards to what we are looking at on your transcript, um, we're going to be looking at the GPA and the coursework that you've taken. You see a little breakdown with the numbers on the left hand side. If your GPA, as we calculate from your core subject classes, if that comes out to a 2.6 or higher, you're indeed going to be admissible with the test optional criteria, and we won't need any ACT or SAT scores. The 2.4 to 2.6 range, you'll be admissible for our Summer Bridge program, getting a chance to start with us in June, but in a little bit smaller setting versus uh, the larger freshman class starting in August. Great opportunity to still move in early to campus, get a head start with core curriculum, college coursework, no placement tests, no remedial classes, nothing like that. But that's our summer bridge opportunity for students. You can also submit test scores if you're in that range and you want to be considered for fall admission. If you're under a 2.4, that's when we're going to be needing to look at test scores. We're also offering the SAT and ACT on our campus currently. We have an on-campus testing center. We are offering this in a very safe setup, uh, much more distanced and uh, limited capacity than normal. Uh, but again, if you have not taken an SAT or ACT and need to do so, or you'd like to do so, again, consider Clayton State in regards to being able to tech, uh, take one of these two tests with us. In regards to affordability and financial aid, we're going to be accepting the FAFSA, your financial aid application, just like the majority of these institutions here today. Uh, the FAFSA is currently up online. You can send this to Clayton State for uh, next academic year. If you're a high school senior, that'd be the 2021-2022 FAFSA. If you are qualified or eligible for the HOPE Scholarship or the Zell Miller Scholarship, being a public four-year institution, we indeed take either one of those. It's going to cover a large chunk of your tuition. If you're a HOPE Scholar, it's going to be coming out to about 95% of your tuition covered by HOPE. Zell Miller Scholarship would be covering about 100% of the tuition. Uh, but otherwise, all the other financial aid opportunities and scholarships, it all starts with the FAFSA. We do not have a separate application for financial aid. It's just going to be uh, helping you through the FAFSA process as you do this with Clayton State. 
And I'm going to be wrapping us up here. Talked about um, submitting the application for admission, which is online on our website right now. If you are not a high school senior, maybe you are a junior or a sophomore, the application each year typically opens in August for the year ahead. But if you're a senior, again, we'd love to help you with this process and, and get you all set with your decision just as soon as we can. We've got campus tours offered Monday through Friday currently with limited capacity. It's basically a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. You'll have your own student tour guide with you and your family taking you around safely on our campus. We're going to do Monday through Friday, all five days a week, offered at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. We've got open house programs for high school students once every two weeks called Freshman Preview Day. It's a little bit bigger setup, but still right now, uh, limited capacity on those. And we've also got online virtual open house events as well as online one-on-one -on -one appointments that you can register for on our website down there at the very bottom. But these are offered each and every week. So you let us know when you're ready and we'll be happy to meet you either virtually or on our campus. I'll pause here. Let me see if I can stop the screen share. Thank you. Um, All right, thanks everybody. Cool. And last but not least, we'll hear from Georgia Southern um, with Devin Hodges. All right, good morning, everybody. I'll keep my presentation um, short and sweet. It's the last one. And a lot of the information is going to be very similar to what Will um, and Alex and everyone else have shared. So give me one second to figure out how to share my screen. Um, and then we can go through a little bit about Georgia Southern. All right, so hopefully you guys can see that. Can you see it? Perfect, all right. So I think what makes us a little bit different, one, we're probably the furthest away from y'all and we also have three campuses. So I'll start by talking a little bit about what each campus looks like and kind of what you can expect um, because they are all three very different. So the Armstrong campus is gonna be kind of our mid-sized option. It's in Savannah. Um, it is about, 5,000 students or so. So it kind of feels like a private school when you're on campus, um, a lot smaller than what you'll see um, in Statesboro. But at the same time, it's in Savannah, which is a much larger city than what you'll see in Statesboro. So there's a little bit more um, going on in the actual city of Savannah than there is in Statesboro. So this is gonna be kind of a smaller campus, but in a larger city. Um, the class sizes are pretty small. So usually anywhere from like 20 to 25 students is an average, um, sometimes even smaller than that. And then it's only about 300 acres. It's actually a certified arboretum, which means it's basically one gigantic garden on campus. Um, and everything's labeled too. So you can kind of see like what the different plants are and they have like fruit orchards even on campus. So it's really pretty, it's exactly what I picture when I think of Savannah with the Spanish moss hanging from the trees, very lush, very tropical. Um, so if you've never been to the Armstrong campus, I definitely recommend visiting it. It's really pretty. Um, and this is a really good option too, if you're interested in any of like the health fields. So there is nursing on this campus. Um, they do have a physical therapy track. They have speech pathology. Um, so a lot of your health programs are located on the Savannah campus. The Statesboro campus is your biggest campus in terms of size and student body. So um, to compare, we have almost 20,000 students on the Statesboro campus, but again, it's in Statesboro, which is a little bit smaller um, than Savannah. It's more of your traditional college rural town. So um, we have about 30, 35 students in the class typically. Um, so still pretty small class sizes on campus. Um, this is home to our Division I athletics. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, so Statesboro is going to be your biggest option, but in a smaller kind of rural college town. And then we also have a Liberty campus. This really is meant for those that live in Liberty County. So this probably isn't going to mean a whole lot to y'all. It's definitely not a destination campus by any means. They don't have residential housing or anything like that. So we won't spend a ton of time here, but um, to give you an idea of size, they have about 500 students. It's mostly geared towards military and dual enrollment and non-traditional students. And it's in Hinesville, if you're familiar with the South Georgia area. 
we do have about 300 student organizations to join. So we have a pretty active campus. There's a lot to get involved with. And I think um, no matter who you talk to, any student that you speak with, I think that this is an area that they pretty commonly say is like what makes their college experience great um, is what they're getting involved with outside of the classroom, but still on campus. So everything that you could ever imagine, they have it on campus to get involved with. Um, so they have major based organizations um, to go along with whatever you're studying, but they also have um, like club and intramural sports are, are really popular. They have Greek life, um, Harry Potter club. I mean, anything you can think of, they have it on campus. And then if there is something that you've been really involved with, but we don't have it here, you can always start it um, yourself and start your own organization too. So there's a lot to do um, on campus and it's definitely very active. And this is an area too that um, like a lot of your professors and especially our career services team will really encourage you to get involved with because it is something that you can put on your resume for when you are graduating um, to show how you got involved outside of the classroom um, and within Georgia Southern's community. We are division one athletics. So that is a big part of our culture here at Georgia Southern. We're all um, big sports fans, I'd say, um, especially in Statesboro. So Statesboro is where all of our division one athletics teams are held. So all of our home games are in Statesboro. Um, but um, just very similar to a lot of your other schools, you pay an athletics fee um, with your tuition and fees, and that gets you into any home game with your Eagle ID. So we're all really excited for when we have a uh, full capacity in our sports games and things like that, um, so that we're able to start attending those a little bit more freely. Um, and again, we do have club and intramural sports too. So if you wanted to compete, but you're not division one level, um, you could do club sports or is a pretty big variety of what you can choose from there. And those teams actually compete against other universities. And then with club and intramural, you're just competing against other students, sometimes even faculty member um, at Georgia. We have a lot of resources on campus. I won't go through every single thing, but a few important ones to highlight. Um, you do have an academic advisor that is paired with you based on your major. So they'll be your advisor the whole time that you're here. Um, so you'll meet with them every semester to register for classes, make sure that you're staying on track um, and that you're comfortable with your schedule. We do have a Student Accessibility Resource Center, so if you need any kind of extra accommodations, you can work with them to make sure that you have those. There is free tutoring across campus for every major, so um, if you ever feel like you're struggling in class and you need some extra help, you can always access free tutoring. And we also have a writing center, so if you need help um, outlining a paper or citing sources or anything like that, we have the writing center, and again, that's free for you to use as well. Um, we have health services, we have counseling, so really anything you need. Campus is kind of like a small city and it's um, very walkable and very accessible, so you have access to all of these things as a student. Um, and then career and professional development too is a really big one. So um, it might not mean a lot to you guys as incoming freshmen, but when you start to progress in your sophomores, juniors, seniors, um, they're super helpful with organizing different job fairs on campus and helping you put your resume together and work on cover letters and that kind of thing. So there are a lot of resources available to you as students um, at Georgia Southern. Um, I'll quickly talk about our requirements. They're very similar to what everyone else has shared. So we are test optional for fall 2021. We haven't received any confirmation about 2022 quite yet, but I'm hoping to get some more clarification on what that's gonna look like soon. So right now we are test optional for fall 2021. We're looking at your um, college application. We don't have an essay or anything like that. And then we're also looking at your high school transcript. So um, if you have a 2.6 unweighted GPA or higher, we don't need any test scores. The GPA is calculated in our office, so it might be a little bit different from what you're used to seeing um, on your high school transcript because it's not cumulative. So we'll calculate that in-house. If you have a 2.6 or higher, we don't need any test scores, no SAT or ACT. If you have a 2.5 to a 2.59, you could still be admitted. We would just need to have your test scores on file at that point. So you would have to have either a 20 ACT composite or a 1030 SAT. So those are your two points of entry there. We do typically have a summer admit program. We won't be having one um, this summer, but hopefully next year we'll be able to resume that because it's usually pretty popular. And then we do have a first year live on requirement. So all freshmen are required to live on campus. There are a few exceptions. So our local students that live within 30 miles don't have to live on campus. Um, if you have 30 hours of 
credit, whether it's dual enrollment credit or transfer credit, you don't have to live on campus. So students can exempt um, based on those two things there. So on-campus housing is really nice. It's very safe, very secure. Um, we do have apartment and suite style housing for the most part. We only have like one uh, residence hall that still has kind of your traditional dorm setup. So for the most part, you would have a private room and then you can choose if you want an apartment or suite style. Obviously the apartments are super popular. So those are usually the first ones to get um, taken. So definitely apply early if you can for housing. If you've already been accepted as an incoming freshman, the housing application is open now. So you can go ahead and sign up for housing. Um, and it's just very accessible to everything on campus. It's a short walk to class, to the dining commons and all of that. So just historically, students that live on campus are a little bit more successful as what we've seen in the past. Um, and there's a lot of different living learning communities too. So if you're um, you know, really interested in engineering or music or um, game design, there's a lot of different ones that you can choose to live in. And that way you're in a community with other students that you're taking classes with. Um, so it's really easy to start like a study group and that kind of thing. So um, typically students have a really good experience living on campus. Um, you can have cars. It's usually a pretty common question that we get. And so you can have cars on campus your first year. You'll just have a residence hall parking um, permit and you'll park at your residence hall and pretty much walk everywhere else. No matter which campus you attend, it's very walkable. Um, everything's pretty centralized, so it's a pretty short distance um, between point A to point B. Um, and then part of living on campus, you also have a meal plan. So it's all access pretty much. We have two dining uh, halls on the Statesboro campus and then one main one on the Savannah campus. It's all access, which means you can go in as many times a day as you want to. Um, the food's really good. And then we also have like Starbucks and Chick-fil-A and that kind of thing on campus as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, my name's Devin Hodges. I'm the coordinator of freshman recruitment. I don't typically travel much to the Atlanta area, um, but I am covering for John Bowie. So you may have talked to him already, um, but I can drop my contact information in the chat. So if you guys do have any questions about anything um, that I've covered, feel free to reach out. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, all of those. Thanks. I, I learned a lot about all the institutions um, and I visited pretty much everyone except Clayton. So I have to come visit Clayton State. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much to all of our presenters for sharing all of this helpful information. Before we move into our question and answer portion of the event, um, I wanted to take a moment to introduce uh, one of our current college AIM collegians who's a college student who's on the call. Um, Sally, do you, would you like to introduce yourself um, and tell us which college you attend and something that surprised you once you started Ooh. college? It's so good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice seeing you too. Yeah, just introduce yourself, where you go to school, what year you are, and what's something that surprised you once you started this journey? Oh, gosh. Um, well, my name is Sally Newman, but I just more generally go by Newman. It's a lot more easier to remember. I am, well, my technical label is a sophomore at GSU based off the credits that I have, but this was my freshman year. And there's a lot that has uh, surprised me. Um, I don't even know where to, where to start from there. And my, my freshman year has been uh, very different based off students mainly being held online versus on campus. Mm -hmm. So I will be very limited in uh, being able to answer questions regarding uh, what it's like having the online uh, college campus life at GSU. Yeah, yeah, I feel that we've been trekking through. So, um, yes, thanks for sharing. And now we'll open it up for questions um, from our participants today, our guests today. So feel free to either type your question in the chat box or use the raise your hand um, function, which depending on your device might be on the bottom of your screen under the reaction tab, or you can click the more button with the three dots that's by your picture um, and raise your hand and I'll be sure to call on you. So any questions for our current college student um, or any of our presenters um, that shared today from their respective institutions?
Any questions? Oh, oh, I see one. Kina, I think I said that right. Okay, I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask about um, what do they have like sororities and yeah, sororities, frats, and like Greek life and all that type of stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, anybody can answer. Yes, um, with Albany State University, we have all of the Divine Nine here um, at ASU. Um, when with Greek Life is very active on campus, um, we have like Get Them to Greek Week. So um, if you're interested in Divine Nine, we do have that at ASU. And we have Greek Life as well at Georgia State University. Uh, roughly about 8% of our students are in a Greek fraternity or sorority. Um, I will say it looks a little different on our campus because of the location. So if you ever come to Georgia State's campus, you're not going to see these huge colonial style homes for Greek life. Uh, we actually have three story townhomes uh, where a lot of our Greek organizations live. So you can live in um, those Greek townhomes starting your sophomore year on campus, but they are pretty active. They do a lot of service work in the community as well. And yes, to fraternities and sororities at Clayton State, similar to Georgia State, we don't necessarily have uh, large houses for these organizations, uh, but they're very active uh, and just use on campus spaces for meetings and such. We have Greek life as well at Georgia Southern. Um, I think it's about 15% of our students participate in it. So it's pretty popular, but it's not like the only thing on campus. Um, we do have kind of like the traditional Greek row with all the uh, fraternity and sorority houses. Um, and we have, I think, close to 40 of them on campus. Thanks, y'all. So yes, so much Greek life. Um, uh, there's a question in the chat, and I think it's for you, Newman. Why did you choose Georgia State? Um, I had particularly chose Georgia State for, for a few reasons. Uh, it's very close. Um, I live in Decatur, which is like 15 minutes away from Atlanta. And GSU is very diverse. So I was looking for a school that was close, also diverse and a bit, didn't necessarily have to be large, but I was looking for something that would be more, especially welcoming, being from such a, a small background. Before I had went to a public high school, my experience was secluded to going to uh, small, uh, poor private schools. So the background, it was a little bit marginalized. So I wanted to get out there and learn more about the urban life and what it's like being out in that kind of setting with that many different kind of people versus just being from a specific background. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. No um, and then I'm going to go to the crowd. Ella. Oh, wait. Disappeared. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so do you all, like any of the colleges, have like a good psychology department? Because I'm very interested in like the psychology major. So I think that's one of the more popular majors at pretty much every school. Um, so we do have that at Georgia Southern. We have it all the way through a doctor doctoral program if you wanted to go that route. Um, so that's definitely one of the more popular majors, I feel like, among students. Yes to psychology at Clayton State, both undergraduate, bachelor's degree, as well as a master's. Same here. We offer a degree all the way up to a doctoral degree. Um, there's a lot of research opportunities as well, beginning your freshman year. So if you're interested in like clinical psychology as a long-term career, then you definitely have those opportunities at Georgia State. And with um, Albany State University, we do have a bachelor's in psychology. Thanks. So yes, psychology is everywhere. Um, and then going back to the chat, do any of the schools have a U.S. history course, which I think that's a yes, or animation classes? Hmm. Can you repeat the second part of that question? You, you asked about history courses and... Yes, or animation classes. Animation. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, Georgia State University, we actually offer a degree in uh, digital media and design, uh, which is very similar to animation. Um, about five years ago, the university invested in something called the Creative Media Industries Institute, or what we call the CMI for short. So we have a four-story building that's in downtown across from Woodger Park. Um, it has all the technology that you would typically see on like a film studio. So um, like green screen, CGI technology, everything that you would typically see that's involved with the production of a major blockbuster film is right there on our campus. Um, and then as far as history courses, I think that's that's probably something that's offered at um, pretty much all of our institutions, but it's something you can definitely pursue at Georgia State. Well, and then Devin mentioned that Georgia Southern has both, but yes, I'm pretty sure you can find all the US history, all the history classes, courses at any of the institutions. Um, another question from the chat is, how do I apply for a sports scholarship? Mm. Paige, I'm coming to you next. So sports. I'm happy to take this one. Um, so Clayton State, we're a division two institution. Uh, division two, we do offer athletic scholarships, not necessarily something you're applying for, but our athletic coaches for the teams that we have on our campus, uh, they're going to be offering a select number of athletic scholarships to not everyone on their rosters, uh, but a good number of them. Uh, so those are at the discretion of the coaches to give out rather than the students having to apply for them. You're a student athlete and you're having some communication with college coaches and, and thus getting recruited in that sense. That's great. Uh, but otherwise, there's not going to be an application to fill out uh, for those specifically. That's going to be for, uh, for any institution that offers athletic scholarships. Yep. Thank you, Will. Um, Paige, you had a question. Uh, yes, I am interested in taking the engineering or architecture pathway. I was wondering what type of colleges like are like good for that type of course. We have um, a, quite a few four year engineering degrees at Georgia Southern. Um, we don't have architecture, though, as one of ours, so we participate in the REPP program. If you're familiar with that, it's basically a transfer program um, across the state of Georgia. So you could take like two years of engineering at pretty much any university system of Georgia school, and then you could transfer to another school that has the program that you're looking for. It's not a guaranteed transfer, um, but for example, like we have students that will start here at Georgia Southern do two years and then we'll transfer to Georgia Tech. And we have a faculty member that kind of helps facil facilitate that transfer and keep students up to date with um, the requirements for that program and um, what they're looking for each semester. So they kind of help facilitate that transfer. Thank you. Um, Newman, I have a question for you. What was the transition or difference like or the experience like with transitioning from high school coursework to college coursework. So what were some of the differences or similarities? Sorry, um, I went to go and get some water. Um, for me, it's um, relatively the same. When I was doing, when I was in high school, I was doing dual enrollment. And a good chunk of those classes I were taking were online for the sake of conveniency. So, uh, and by my senior year, I had like kind of like done everything to where I were, I was taking one class for my second semester in the senior year and that was also online. So the change wasn't really something really big or hard to adjust to for a lot of other high school students who are obviously going to school five days a week and then having to suddenly be online and not being familiar with uh, how to do online work or like online etiquette, things are just very foreign and different to them that they're just not used to. So for, for me in particular, it was a relatively easy shift. The only thing that I probably would have liked to have was um, the 
presence of more college students. So I did go and visit downtown and it's, well, right now more students are, are starting to come onto campus, but before uh, it was it's pretty quiet. Uh, you probably find most students in the library and they were studying, not necessarily looking to socialize. So that was probably for me, one of the hardest adjustments to uh, be inside of because high school, you can just go and socialize with almost anybody and everybody. And it's not the same in that kind of college setting. Yeah, I feel that. Thank you. You're um, Going back to the chat, Maron, Mara, Mara, sorry. Hi, yeah, I had a question. As far as test scores go, um, and I know most colleges um, have made it optional as far as SATs and SATs, but for those of us that are going to college, excuse me, <clears throat> for those of us that are going to college in 2022, our faith is unknown. So um, based on what um, what happened like before, before COVID or whatever, um, are both scores required or would one suffice as far as SATs and ACTs? We typically look at one or the other. So as long as you meet the requirements on one, it doesn't matter to us which one you take. And the only other thing I'll add here is that for students, uh, say you're a high school junior and you're applying for admission in 2022, uh, indeed, the public four-year schools, like the ones we have represented here today, uh, we're awaiting guidance from what's called the University System of Georgia on if we're going to either A, require test scores next year, or B, do like we're doing this year and uh, be using the test optional criteria, uh, maybe criteria changes slightly, but just being able to potentially admit students without test scores. No word just yet, but the tests themselves, the SAT and the ACT, they are more available than they were, say, this time last year or in the fall, by all means. Um, so we're just as ready as you all to receive guidance and be able to, uh, to move on with uh, working with students who are getting ready to start this process come summertime. But we imagine that there will be a concrete answer here. Uh, but just know that if the decision is made to where uh, our public institutions in Georgia, we are required to have tests, please know that uh, if that decision is, is made by the university system, it's just simply based on the fact that the tests are certainly more available uh, coming up this summer and fall. And, and for a lot of institutions, you'll have plenty of time to take tests, even if, say, in your junior year, you didn't have a chance to. Oh, thanks, y'all. Um, Amani. Oh, yes, I had a question. I just wanted to know um, if you are accepted into a college, but you're not sure what you want to major in, is there anybody who could give you any guidance on that so you don't feel like too alone um, in choosing a major? Yeah. Um, so one thing I would tell you is not to be afraid to go into your college experience undecided. Um, that's one of the most popular choices for incoming freshmen at Georgia State and pretty much most of the colleges that I've worked at in the past. Um, so definitely don't feel afraid to take your core classes your freshman year, um, get a good foundation and understanding about what you're passionate about. Also take advantage of resources on that particular college campus. So whether that be through career services or just meeting with academic advisors or upperclassmen students who kind of serve as your mentors, uh, de definitely take advantage of those, ser um, those services offered because that can kind of help guide you in the right direction. But yeah, I definitely don't feel like you're alone in, in kind of being undecided. It's not uncommon for students to change their majors uh, once or even twice before they actually graduate. I would just advise you not to do it too many times because you want to try to graduate within four years to increase you know, your earning potential in, in your career after college, but uh, definitely don't don't feel afraid going going in and undecided. Yes, and college aim is also here. Um, I mean, to support you as you um, make those decisions on what it is you want to decide or decide to major on. We actually have a lot of students who are um, undecided and they figure out what they want to do towards the end of their first year, sometimes the beginning of their second year. And so 
um, I'm happy to connect you with other collegians too, who are like on that path. But yes, don't feel the pressure. Any other questions? Sorry, my dog is like, has all the questions. Anyone else? Um, I'll swing it back to Newman and then I'll stop bothering you. Is there any advice that you have um, for the participants that are here um, as they embark on their, I guess, potential journey to stay in state um, and go to a four year Georgia university or college? Do you have any advice for them? I would probably the biggest thing um, is learning to set a schedule and learning how to manage your time. Different classes, they have different amounts of work, uh, different amounts of required um, studying hours. So learning to have that schedule in the beginning of the fall semester and the spring semester, it's really crucial because you have, you may have other things that are wrong in your life, like you may have to like try and work out and try and go to your job, things of that nature. So I would really like having a, a schedule, it's at least for me um, as an incoming freshman, it was really helpful and it's really crucial in having one because it allows you to establish order with what you're going to do. Thank you. That's, no that's the most dang like the, the time management, that's, that's the most dangerous piece of of being a college student. Um, another question, which is a good question. All the questions are great. What precautions um, are you all taking with COVID-19? And I guess if you have any updates on what classes will look like in the fall, um, as far as um, COVID-19, um, just share what you're, you are able to. So for Clayton State and for a lot of the university system at Georgia schools, uh, we're following CDC guidance and, and guidelines. Uh, basically, these decisions are being made at the state level with that university system of Georgia I described previously. Uh, but in regards to the fall, I think just about all of our public four year schools specifically, our campuses are going to be back to full on campus operations for fall. Uh, in regards to health and safety measures starting then in August, um, I, I think every institution is going to be just a little bit different based on like if the students are on campus there or if they're commuting. Uh, we're going to wait and see in regards to what the face covering or face mask policy will look like uh, as there's a chance that, for example, uh, current guidance is that um, we're using it on our campuses, but there's talks about uh, maybe by then we won't have to require it outside. It'll be indoors only. Uh, there's conversations about three feet social distancing instead of six. Um, so the plan is that, yes, on campus operations as normal uh, in the sense of students being on campus in August, but those details are going to be announced by the university system over the course of the summer, just to make sure that, again, no matter um, what status we're all in with uh, the pandemic and so forth that uh, we're, we're still taking precautions of some kind come August. Yeah, and just to add on to what Will was saying, I think most, I can probably confidently speak for most colleges, public colleges in the state are offering um, the vaccine to incoming students as well. Um, so they're offering that and um, also kind of being really creative with our use of space on campus. So right now, um, a lot of spaces on our campus that might have been typically only reserved for special events or larger events are now being utilized for actual classes. Um, so yeah, I can speak at Georgia State, roughly about 80% of our classes this fall are going to be offered in person. Um, so you'll still have the option to take a few of your classes uh, virtually or hybrid. Um, but, but most of them, most of them going to be in person, but we'll just be really creative about how we use space and still follow all those CDC guidelines. Cool. Thanks, y'all. So, yes, look out for what the USG is going to say. Any other questions? Thanks, Paige, for coming. Any other questions or any final thoughts from our um, college and university representatives?
I um I do quickly want to disclose that GSU does offer the COVID vaccine. Um, of course, if you're 16, you're eligible to take it for Pfizer. But if you're interested in, if you have a, a preference based off what you heard, um, Moderna, you can take that uh, when you're 18. So if you have like a late birthday or something, you can take that if you are attending to are uh, planning to attend uh, GSU. Just want to fully put that out there. I've actually been uh, fully vaccinated as of last Friday by GSU. So. Thank you, Newman. And thank you, Newman, no for joining us in the middle of a Wednesday when I'm sure <laughs> you probably are doing finals, getting ready for finals. So we appreciate you. No problem. Um, okay. I am a parent of a rising S S excellent words, y'all. Excellent presentation. You said we'll receive an email with a record. Yes, you'll receive an email. And that's kind of like my last wrap up thing. If there aren't any other thoughts um, or comments, um, this brings us to the end of the session. Remember, you'll receive the links to all of the recorded sessions from College Exploration Day um, and contact information if you'd like to follow up with any of the particular schools. Um, and so, yeah, thanks to all of our panelists. We truly appreciate you all and everything that you do for College AIM and our community and our students. Um, and for taking time for being here um, today. So yeah, y'all have a great Wednesday. Good luck to all of our high school students that are wrapping up too with finals and good luck college representatives as y'all like end out this year. <laughs> it's been a year. So yeah, bye.